Okay, hello once again. It turned out to be that yesterday I just got the information that I'm the one to present it, so pardon for some, you know, errors or something, but I'll try to make it interesting for you. Actually, let's go for commit log. If somebody is interested, you can make the git log and check the commits. We actually sent, went through the git logs and selected the most interesting features awaiting the commit. So we have the partitioning, and at the moment we can use any type of expressions for partitioning. It's an interesting feature. For example, you just create the parts table, creative part, just tom table, and then you do the partition by range, and you set the range. The left one is fixed, and the second one is the open one, and that is calculated. Here you can actually make any type of expression, and it's implemented in a very convenient way. This is committed. Uh, runtime partition bring in. Do you know what does merge Japan means? It used to be the following way. If you make a request for partition table and from any so you just pull the results in, to, from different sources into one bucket then it's sorted <laughs> and only then you just get it back. So that works pretty slow, but now during the runtime, when you cannot tell from the first time what type of partitions you have, about category equals, and the calculated category you cannot tell it right now. You can actually know only during the runtime. Now we have a nice improvement. Everybody understands plans. And we can easily see what partition is used, and others are not executed. They're in the plan, but not executed. So for some requests, this is a saver. Again, partitioning, it shall actually, you know, decrease the uh, routing overhead. Tupla for partitions. If, for example, you insert 10,000 tables into the table with 10,000 partitions, then overhead for calculations is huge. For example, previously for every for every injected line or row, we actually executed the routing process. You can see that in version 11 it takes 96 TPS, but in version 12 you see how much it is. So we get better productivity and efficiency. So it virtually matches the non partitioned table. Non partitioned table is the fastest just because we don't have the overhead of selection of different partitions. And we see that the patched version virtually catches up the productivity of the non-partitioned table. And of course, this is actually when we get the nearing data, we get the data, they are localized and you get a huge benefit when you say 1,000 rows go to one table and you make it only one time instead of making it a few thousand times. This is a great benefit and commit. Commit for SPGs. Do you know what is KNN? Who does? Who knows what KNN means? Not too many, and I'm sorry for that because I'm one of the KNN authors, and I believe that this is a chunk, and we did it before Oracle and Microsoft. And 
This is a very useful thing. For example, you have a, you want to find in your store, you have you know the list of stores with the coordinates and you want to find the 10 nearest stores. The question is, how can you execute this request? As you all, there is no use in using indexes because you cannot write V. Okay, select 12 or 10 nearest store. You can actually go through all the tables, calculate the distance from you to every single store, then sort it and take the 10 nearest. Of course, the Predictivity of this request of this query has linear dependency on the number of table, the size of table. If you have like one million, one billion stores, but we wanted to use indexes for such search. And a few years ago, we got an idea how to make it, and we did it. The indexes in Postgres go from top to bottom, but there is another strategy from left to right, and we implement a strategy with priorities. This is the uh, queue with priorities. And thanks to this, we managed to make an algorithm that enables to use the indexes and efficiently calculate the nearby neighbors, and the productivity is logarithmic is proportional to the uh, tree depth and the more table the better it is. For example, when I actually made the, con the presentation for the first time and when I actually demonstrated that the KNN productivity was 10 times, 10,000 times more than everything, they quote quite seriously. You know, but before me, there was, you know, like a 15. Per, they were telling about 15 percent speed increase. But I said, if your table will contain 15 billion lower rows, then the increase will be much more. We just did it for GIST. GIST is great for such data, and it's great for R3 for the space data. But we sound, we have other uh, things like SPGist. It's like a template for indexes, but it's dedicated for the data that are not that not overlap. If you look R3, this is a standard tree, and the boxes overlap. This leads to the fact that for some requests. You shall actually visit not only one tree branch, but also another one, and yet another one. But if you do the KD3 or Quad3, these are the data that segment the space into the chunks that do not overlap. And sometimes you get significant speed up. So we had the task for Google Doc. A student generated an algorithm for SPGist. Then our guys took it and fine-tuned it and committed. You can see an example here. There is no example for sequential scan. As I said, that the difference will be a few thousand times. But we just compare the space time for GIST and SPGist. We can see that SPGist may be slightly faster than GIST, but at the same time it actually affects more buffers. As you can see, GIST has 14 buffers and SPGist 18 buffers. Here you need to choose whether you need to have speed or memory. This is commit. KNN for B3 is close to commit. And it's just, you know, a standard example. You need to find an event with the data of January 1st, 2001, or 2003. You can actually make it. You make two requests and then you make union. 
Then you do the union. You can make the bed ridges. Or you can make K and N for B3. I don't see him here. So our developer was actually doing this. We have the great win here. We need actually to finish to fertilize some things in order to commit it. And we do hope that it will be committed and this the speed of request will be much higher. It's not like a percentage by the times. So here is the commit and it's quite strange for me. So DBA really wanted to have this. So that in logs <coughs> that we have the request version. Now you can actually take the file and actually see all the information, version, what it's compiled on, and everything like this. It may be quite useful. I see that people think it. Uh, this is when it starts. Next we have patch that enables locking B3 leaves immediately in exclusive mode. But you see how big the difference can be if you insert unordered data, the benefit is huge. If you are using ordered inserts, the benefit is much higher. And we are, if we are inserting duplicates, It increases even more, and it relates to the fact that B3 is indexed and B3 leaves were designed that they were locked like shit, and then they were locked in exclusive mode. It's not clear why we didn't decide to lock them exclusively, but finally we have it, and we have very significant uh, benefits and uh, this feature was committed and you will feel the benefits because I personally was really impressed by that because people are suffering when they are inserting all the data and they don't have uh, any significant benefits but now it was fixed in Postgres there is a uh, two timestamp and to date functions it's, it is very difficult to define and to describe these two functions. Over 20 years I failed to do so, so I know the essence how to use it, but it, have, it has so many options and we found out that to timestamp and to date didn't check out of range. You see the query. 29, 0101, 13th month. So we said that MySQL can put any data, but in fact uh, these uh, functions didn't check this. So now we made it uh, that uh, the system will show you an error. So it became well documented. Maybe your application will stop working, maybe, because of this error. And guys actually discussed it. Maybe we need to keep this error, but we decided to follow the right way, so be ready for this. So we have a very interesting fun function called uh, PG Promote. Right uh, before you could use only a trigger file, you could use PG CTL promote, and now right from SQL you can use select PG promote. Very useful function that can be used for script preparation. It's like a step towards managing clusters, and it was commissioned uh, committed to a very significant uh, benefit. Maybe you face this issue when you have a lot of shared uh, memory and 
you truncate tables or you or you drop tables and you understand that system is busy with something and replicas are, are lagging behind this problem was fixed and the problem was that the more shared memory you have the better it is because you store your data in memory you store your indexes but in fact I do not recommend you to do it because the more shared memory you have the more data you have to store on disk sometimes you can face the situation when you have dirty uh, buffers they will go to disk and the system will be busy only with with disk operations and it will be very it will be very slow and also it leads to a situation when uh, buffers are stored in sh in cache in, uh, it means that when you drop at your table you have to go through all blocks sequentially and clean it up out of the memory so understand you have 3 100 gigs of shared buffers and you have to go through these 300 gig gigs in your memory just to understand which blocks must be dropped it's very slow of course in real life you don't have uh, so much memory but someone can suffer from it Imagine you made a lot of deletes and you truncated, you will be suffering from it and for replicas it's even worse because the process is uh, like um, is, is one threaded so if you drop 10 tables in replica it will go through one stream, one thread and it was very slow because you were scanning it sequentially you are dropping 10 tables and you will you will have to scan your shared buffer 10 times and of course it led to very serious problems now we have only one pass in one pass we can do it when you write begin and delete all these tables will be uh, will be processed in a single pass also, there is a process uh, which is going very slowly to substitute a hash with the Radix tree that will actually help you accelerating the process of matching shared buffers with tables. But the project was suspended because Andrus Root started to do it, but he is busy with pluggable, pluggable storage. That is why the project is suspended for a moment. Uh, this bag uh, exists quite for a while because Postgres is uh, rich with geometric types and we like things like nulls and a normal person will not create a rectangle with none number of uh, angles but in terms of perfectionism we have a couple of guys like Dorothy and someone else, they were suffering like can, can, how, how can we compare NANs with NULLS? And different operations uh, stipulates for different priorities, now it's more standardized. We said that all this underflow, now we can check for underflow, overflow and division by zero. Now we consider that NAN values are equal. We decided to return now when the distance is none for all closest point operators. So maybe it's funny, but for some applications that would be crucial to have some logic at least. Because it is very difficult to explain users why in one case it is error, in another case that's okay. Now everything goes well because all non nuns. Uh, we, so non nuns favor nuns. So it was committed to. Next, we added log statement sample rate parameter. 
Because you are looking for ways to log all statements that consume a lot of resources. But if you would like to log only long statements, your stats may be modified, but you would, would like to make sample logging. Like, not every tenth, but there are, well, there are different parameters. And you can say, like, every statement, no statements, half of statements. So to, to, to take a picture without... Uh, um, overflow in your disk. This is the goal of this parameter. That heap is a very interesting thing. You know that in Postgres one access methods exist which is privileged and it's not in PG PGN. So there is a table PGN with B3, Gs, uh, SPGs, but you won't find heap in it because heap is something that is built uh, into Postgres like on a hardware level and everything would be fine but it suffers with a lot of problems sometimes would like to replace it you know these problems you know what is long you know what is what is blow and you faced these problems. Have you ever read a book, an article by Hilo Stein about Postgres history? Just recently it was published, you can find it on GitHub and Archive.org, uh, an article about, about Postgres uh, history. And this Hilo Stein was a Stonebreaker student and he was participating in uh, Postgres development and he was also responsible for for GIS development, and then the entire work was uh, rebuilt. It was um, it was his thesis, and it wasn't it couldn't be compiled, so we cancelled. But we make it workable. So heap suffers from a lot of updates. Every time you update, a version appears, and it is stored in the same place. For example, Oracle stores the latest version and in Postgres it's all versions. So guys, do not go there, they uh, make it here. Now that heap uh, is a step forward towards uh, Oracle-like uh, approach. So we have heap on top and that heap is what we will have in future. So we keep the latest version in heap and others go to uh, to unlock so we substitute tuples hot chains you know what is hot chain it's like uh, all versions are connected are dependent on each other and you in undo log there are no limitations and we just have undo chains instead of hot chains. So that is why we have designed that heap. It is being driven by a SSDB company, but there are more people that are interested in promoting this approach. It's an, an example when several companies unite their efforts in order to make such patches and this is what enterprise companies are looking for because they are used to Oracle approaches and they would like to have the same and it happened due to several reasons. He was staying sad. The Stonebreaker was against these walls, ABCCs. He said that the versions, the, that log must be stored together with the data. So the idea was to have temporary um, statements like to take a version and so on and so forth. I remember when I was working with older versions of Postgres I had a directory and uh, the directory was appearing at point TT time travel I could understand what happened to my database a few days ago but then Vadim Mikheyev 
who read a lot of uh, intelligent uh, articles, and I remember that discussion. He cut it off. He made ACC and then wall, and now we are starting to go back as we understand that the price, the cost is too high. And we are hoping that the experiment will show who is right and who is not. You see that in version 12 we expect less uh, hip bloats, less index bloats, because hot-like updates are more frequent and index update situation isn't any better yet. And that hip is being developed not just like this, but together with plugable storage. So that heap is under development using plugable storage API. What is plugable storage? So we weren't happy with uh, MySQL, but I was jealous because they have different storage, but some storages are too independent. In Postgres we will have API for storages and the log will be common. And this API will support different storages with their own vacuums. You can do whatever you want. You can have append only storage and all you have to do is to write uh, functions interface. Thanks to that you will guarantee integrity across all storages because there will be only one wall and we are looking forward to having it because loads are so different and data are so different so would like to keep some data in different storages like append only data i don't need any x means or x max so maybe i can use something um less uh, uh, less performant some things can be optimized and this is a very big and very important project and i predict that once the api will become stable companies will start developing different storages and it will open even better possibilities to postgres community merge sql statement you all know that story with the uh, insert and update with merges statements many years ago more than 10 years ago the question was that we need merge simon riggs started to write it many years ago then peter gagan sponsored by Heroku company said that I would be doing this thing and then he spent two years just to prove that this thing was, was not possible. That's why he made insert an update but it was conflicting. We are using this right now and that's enough for a moment for practical things but merge is SQL standard and that is why we made a second attempt to implement this merge and it was even committed but uh, very quickly it was uncommitted because we understood this merge couldn't implement uh, things we wanted to be implemented to the very end and uh, technically it was implemented with some errors, it was too uh, complicated, there were some problems with um, images and Simon eventually closed the project, it was uncommitted. In fact, that was for the first time that the feature, such a big feature, was uncommitted. So we lost the merge and Simon lost his uh, committer status but this year we decided to make it once again another person uh, took over merge promotion we have found a lot of problems and I told you that the common 
opinion, it will not go to version 12. Because, you know, merging Oracle, in fact, it suffers with artifacts. So we could make the same thing, but our Postgres perfectionism doesn't allow us to having these artifacts. We would like to make it like an SQL statement, and we fail to do so as of today. Connection Pooler. Who knows the problem with Connection Pooler? Because all you use PG Bouncer, Odyssey from Yandex. But it's not because we are happy with what we are hearing right now. It's because there is a necessity to have a lot of connections. Like a lot of legacy applications are written in a way that we have a server with the 10 switch collectors and they say, okay, we, we, we have the right to do, but they are not doing a single thing. In Postgres, all these collectors are consuming resources and more than 200 or two, one or 200 connections are not recommended. You may, you, you are using PG Bouncer, you use uh, Cascade, and you have to to have several of them, and then you end up with the picture that I drew you. So the system is 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 uh, is working, but it's very unoptimized, and there are several points where your system can crash. So people were dreaming to have their own pooler, and I have to say that in our company we have implemented this connection pooler, and just recently. We released it to commit first, and uh, now it's on the discussion. And in, in fact, Citus company asked us to do so because their customers were looking for this solution. And I'm hoping that if two companies promote it, we will launch it. So actually, no, this um, puller has different settings, everything is open. Nice. We tested up to 10,000 connects. It works okay. There are threads inside. We use proxy, tested different options. But the most important thing is that they can survive and have resources. They can reuse the resources. The problem is that in within your session, you can actually, you know, make backend dirty. You can make some, you know, variable or change the session parameter then the next may not use it because the next one expects the normal standard backend but that something has changed there that is the reason you need actually to use the puller and differentiate the free connect and the connects that are dedicated now that are not neat and pure there is some effort so the main problem of PG Bouncer is that it doesn't support the query. But sometimes it would be really nice to have the appropriate queries. We use the test. We have a patch called Auto Prepare. All the queries are automatically prepared and then executed. And the logic is simple. If the execution and uh, predictability is less than we don't use it don't be worried postgres will do everything we have the patch well so we actually did the test on different heads on average the uh, productivity is two times as efficient just simply because we just most part of queries are prepared in efficient way it's not like the thing you're taking uh, tickling with uh, at home but actually you know you have typical questions, you don't get typical, don't get new question queries. And of course, we should have just prepared it, but PG Bouncer will not allow you to do this. So we really hope. So it's an example the way we actually send it to the society. So uh, JSON. SQL JSON, I will just tell you in detail. I'm the main author and solo author is somewhere in these audios. 
It's a large project. And just SQL. one relational database and for the other but then we just deleted the borderlines as we got JSON, JSON B, we had H store before that. Other bases started using JSON like SQL and SQL and SQL standard realized this and in late nineteen ninety six it yield a uh, new standard SQL 1996 and they have a directory dedicated to JSON. Now they say that JSON is the correct one. We have the described declarative language you can work with and it guarantees that all the queries working with one base will work with other base. At the moment it is not the case. Everyone has the functional database and interface, everything is different. You can, you know, make, you know, one uh, the thing like um, Amazon did reproduce the Mango interface, but as you know, the uh, Mango DB or JSON DB, so people cannot make the difference. But we don't care, we are walking our own way. And for two years we've been pushing this project into our society. And at the moment, three days ago, we actually wanted to commit it. Even raise the hand, we'll get ready to commit, but then we discovered some problems dedicated to the problems. So, but the postgres society and the perfectionism saying that everything should be correct, it just holds us and we are working in a different way. If any problem or error appears, it just, you know, pulls out. Like in JSON, according to the standard requirement, you shall not actually put it straight ahead, but you shall accumulate all the errors and process them. And depending on the options, um, JSON options, you need to tell whether we're going to make new, or either make a halt, or actually give, store the value like this. You just because think that JSON, where some errors may appear. In JSON, if something is not right, people don't really worry. It's like, you know, transactions will be on different things. If, for example, a mistake or error comes, you just actually, you know, set up something else. And it's a normal practice for a MySQL project. But if you want to work for the Postgres, you know, just show the mistake and drop off, okay, go ahead. Or you just set a minus one, the default value. <clears throat> for this, you need to be able to process the errors, to store it somewhere or process it. And if you do it in a dumb way, you need to do it for a transaction. If you work with JSON path, <clears throat> you know that some transactions are just used in order to catch up different mistakes. This mechanism works okay and it's slow. That's the reason we try to look for some other options. And now we just came to the options and seeing JSON object array aggregates it's like the wrappers within the functions built objects built array so in order to have a standard we just did this as called cloud JSON object is not a function in real it's like an SQL expression explained close it's a reserved word a reserved term but the most important and interesting thing is that we can actually do it without them. It's like JSON B. And the most important thing is the JSON path. JSON path enables you to specify the part of JSON that you want to pull out. 
we're seeing this JSON with a lot of chunk, something notable. But you want to index some things. At the moment, you cannot do this. But with JSON pass, you can actually compile a nice expression. You can use errors, you can use filters, you can use different methods, and you can actually pull out the um, apartments with the area of 42A90. In JSON, you have an array, array of apartments. So I'll give you a few examples so you can have an understanding. Let's see, it's like a schoolish. JSON is like a two-story house, and there is just different apartments with different attributes. And if you want to pull the information on all these apartments, it's like you know the green ones can be pulled with this, and you just you know shall can indicate the JSON. Well, the dollar sign is the root, then you put input floor in your in JSON. It ranges from 0 to 1 in apartment, from the first one to the last one. So you can see that we indicated, you know, the green one, but the blue, the white ones are not within the range because they don't satisfy the range. For example, according to the new one, we write it this way, we just say JSON, then we put JSON pass, then we just say good trapper, so that the result could be wrapped into the array and then we just put in there but if you write it in an old way you would have to write it this way you can do it but it will be more complicated for example if we want to lock uh, to search for moscow word somewhere so you can actually use this simple json pass it's just one line with sql json but with regular see this is the large one, so you can the way you shall do it right now. You can see the evident benefit. Sign is the root, and two stars means that for all hierarchy. And the question mark is a filter where we actually take the current element context and compare it with Moscow. I guess it's quite logical and quite clear. So the next one. And of course, we have function that was developed in order to pull out data SQL JSON. This is JSON value, and you pull out the SQL value. And for Ellen, we just pull out the JSON text. The functions are different, but the most important thing are the three last ones. JSON payable. We just take the JSON in the relation table, because in this case, you can join the result of JSON table, you can join it with your regular tables. This is so easy and actually it empowers JSON. And for JSON and JSON exists, you just, you know, constraints may apply. You can check constraints and use the normal JSON with the normal For example, JSON value. We take JSON with two keys, I and B, and then JSON path. That actually pull out that exceed the value. Dollar, dollar sign X is the exceeded pyramid. Passing is sent transmitted from the table. Generate series. X will take zero, one or two. You can actually go inside and actually check the values from the table. It just gives you a immense flexibility, saying that default and minus one, default minus two if we get the error. So you can easily and flexibly classify it. So if you take this example with a house, you can actually pull out the info on the floors in relational type. You actually, you know, use this and you take the relational, neat relational table and you can actually join it together with your other data. It's a very powerful function.
So we can actually can really check the Postgres implementation. It's like 41 features out of 42, uh, 44 out of 42, and SQL Server 2017, 440 out of 41 or 42. That is why we are able to fully implement the full standard. So there are some problems. Actually, indicated it on purpose. So we have the all joints and everything. We have block paths. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. The next question. Will we have any um, logical replication compatibility with the previous version? Haven't you messed with the reverse compatibility? No, no, no. Postgres will keep it up all to the very last moment. Hello, thank you very much for your presentation. Please tell us the functional table in uh, version 12. Will they be able to truncate? Will they actually link, go, or link to truncate? So, you mean just the external connection? No, no, no. This is a long way to follow. Thank you very much for your presentation. On the slide with the SPGs, what is the cardinal relation? Because you got some figures and some timings, and it's not quite clear how to assess it, how fast it is. There was like one million entries, but we decided not to put in there because all the figures, they depend on your computer, on your disk. It just says, non-science benchmark but the number of batches is notable if you just go for predictability just check the number of buffers you affected and next question about this how are we going to sync the data for file system when we uh, do the tablet uh, manipulations no we haven't changed anything we fully rely on the system we do not have our raw device in this case nothing has changed it's like a large series question do i correctly that z heap doesn't give any um, victory if we change the <coughs> index type unfortunately we don't have anything to do with the index but it is laying ahead People say that we're going to have the specific index manager, but at the moment no one has shown anything like this. But I'd like to tell you it's a serious large project. And it's you know it is not wise to think and expect all of you to start using that heap. But the direction is uh, clear and correct. Yeah, you, it can actually generate a significant increase of uh, processor. What pull your Pulling, res uh, pulling modes it supports. Does it support, for example, by transactions, by uh, statements? We have connection pooling. I don't know the pooling connection. It's like when we go one to one connection. So, the puller. You get a session, you work there with the session, and it's reused. Yeah. We actually had the thread thing, 
But how do they rotate? I don't know, you know, I don't know for sure. But I guess the other guy, he's the author of this and he is really well aware. Third thing, JSON table. Does it materialize whatever you get from the JSON documents? What do you mean by materialize? You get the relation every time we're actually going to reference the same result of JSON table. Will it actually be able to launch it again? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your report. In version 12, do we have any changes in the use of the temporary table? Uh, this is a painful question. We just try to make two attacks, but at the moment we don't have it. We don't have any changes. Recently I found that we have APG variables. And if you want to do the custom development, so you can just do the PG variables with the real correlation and you can store it within the relation. It's like within the memory and you don't have to attach the system catalog or system directory. As everybody remembers and understands the problems with the tables, at the moment we know that the implementation of the table relation is that you cannot do the SMBI and use it. And it's quite a sad thing to, as SMBI could use to generate reports, but you cannot do this as a lot of soft use the temporary tables. It's like a once a, etc. And it's a real pain, a real sadness. And in order to make it and implement it, we need to actually change a lot. I used to have an idea to make it similar to Oracle. It's like input the temp table and into the hardware and use it so this table is always there and make references. But once again, I would like to see, you know, the PG variables extension. If you really need it, then you can actually put it there and you can put your temporary data there and use it as a relation and they will be processed as relation and you can do this and buy but unfortunately it's not suitable to everyone as there are some standard applications that can do this so really want it to be in a nice way at the moment we don't have any solution so in our company we tried to do it for the f for two times but it didn't work uh, i'm not sure about the third time thank you very much for a nice very support please tell us about data compression as far as i understand that we're just moving towards there we are the pl pluggable storage and the second question is a few years ago you did the json z plugin Does it actually match any type of commit release? So you were just saying about the compressed JSON. That was our experiment. It actually exists as an extension. It will work, but it's not exactly what I wanted to see. And I just wanted to see the development by custom compression method, which is do API in order for every data time that you can come classify the compression decompression method. We used to have this type of development and even I disclosed the results but it didn't go to upstream as we do not have the resources. So the we have different compression devices you can use pluggable storage that FS but in now a company we have our own compression compression with encryption. We use it within our enterprise. That is the way. Thank you. I just wanted to ask, take into account that key, what shall we do with it factor? Feel factor? Just test it, try it. You need to understand that if you have redundant data, 
do the fill factor 100. If you update it often, make it 50. The same thing with it effect. Um, we don't have the mathematics formula. Thank you. We've said about the temporary tables, but there is the second problem factor. These are the autonomous transactions or any transaction independent locks because they lock the application activity. Well, in version 12, I didn't tell you about this. In version 11, we committed the ability to commit procedures. It's not transaction, but I'm talking about autonomous transaction that shall enable you to commit lock, no matter whether it's successful or not. We have it. In our enterprise version, we are able to do that. But as for the uh, general version, this feature is not available. But in enterprise version, we can actually make the commit uh, management. So I will go out and you can actually discuss it. May I ask another question? Okay, because people are coming, we need just to be on time.